Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching. Let me get that music going. Uh, today we are totally dressed up for Halloween. I am a penguin. John is a bloody baker and Jesse is a, wait, Jesse is a farmer. And we are here to answer all of your cockroach DB questions. A little caveat is that one, I might have a pair of three-year-olds run in the office at any time because they are home from daycare due to a COVID scare. And two, we also have people working on our house. So I might just disappear. <laughs> um, but that aside, oh wait, no, I'm not supposed to have hands. That aside, <laughs> um, this is a developer-focused success program with a series of workshops and office hours to help you tackle your biggest developer aspirations. Um, and also we want to help you get the most out of CockroachDB, utilizing what you know so well with SQL and Postgres. Um, if you've taken Cockroach University um, and are new to intermediate user to Cockroach Cloud, Cockroach Serverless, Cockroach Dedicated, we just switched. Um, I need to change that on the script. We want to hear about your journey and help you in it with any any problems, any goals, anything you need. Today is the office hours. Yesterday technically was our crud. Uh, I know my hands keep showing because I'm like, it's hot. That's happening. <laughs> well, yesterday we did a workshop about crud uh, REST APIs. We used Node.js. We had so many awesome questions that we didn't get to John's section of the module. So we're going to do that today. While technically today is a office hour, we're also going to have a demo. And then first, I would love to introduce my two guests today. Uh, let's start with John St. John, Enterprise Architect, the bloody baker of Baker Street. Oh, it's Baker we'll back Street. back up just a little bit. This is... <laughs> my Halloween costume. It's the nice. it's the ghetto I use it every year. Um, but my name's John St. John, and I'm an enterprise architect at Cockroach Labs. Uh, I I'm in Utah. Uh, I'm excited to answer questions. Uh, I've worked in a lot of different areas over the years. Uh, a ton with databases, a ton with application development. Um, so have experience with a lot of different languages and um, always a, a lot to learn. So um, I'm hoping that there's some good questions out there. And, you know, even if they're things that, that we can't answer immediately, it's uh, an opportunity for us to learn as well. So um, yes, yeah, looking forward to definitely. it. Definitely. I love it. And the name I was trying to think of yesterday was the Butcher of Baker Street. That is the musical. Oh. That's why I was like, Baker, Bloody Baker. Jesse, talk to me about your farmer's outfit. I'm just kidding. Uh, talk to me about your path to cockroach and maybe your favorite candy too. Yeah, um, I, I'm also an enterprise architect. Uh, I've been in the data industry for a while. Actually, I um, started out learning programming when I was 10. Oh. When other girls were playing pianos and I was learning to code and that was a lot of fun. And uh, I think that was how, you know, I eventually got into this industry. And uh, yeah, um, I was uh, with John yesterday, but I think today is going to uh, be a great show to continue that demo. And uh, we're happy to answer any questions as well. Yeah, definitely. Now talk to me about... So you were 10 years old, you started programming. Was that because a parent also programmed or did you independently stumble across a programming book or how did it that was, happen? Yeah, uh, my dad is a, is an engineer, uh, but on the construction side, like uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. buildings and foundations and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. But I just got, you know, got to those uh, after schools and one of them was like, you know, like computers. I'm like, yeah. what is this? That yeah. sounds interesting. Yeah. I also was exposed very young 
in the sense I was about 10 ish when I was, um, and, and my parents had not a lot of direct influence on that. It's just that, um, my mom was a preacher Mm -hmm. for a small church that couldn't always afford to pay her in cash or in money. So they would take donations from the, not the audience, (laughs) the, the church members to pay her Mm -hmm. with donations from stuff. And one of them gave her an old computer and uh, it was like a TI something that had a little basic cartridge and a book. And I totally stole it and started playing with basic from the age 10, 11 or so. So I get you, I get you, I get you. That's cool. I have a similar first language. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have a similar yeah. similar experience when I was a kid. There is a teacher that was a friend of our family who was trying to teach com- computer programming. I think it was like maybe in a, the first Apple. Yeah. And it was nice. Apple Basic. And nice. then they tested out the program on us when we were like really small. I mean, it must nice. have been eight years old or something. Pascal. Do you remember yeah. the Pascal language? I totally on, remember on Apple? Pascal. That was in mm-hmm. high school that I learned that. Yeah. And I am Rain. <laughs> I'm a developer advocate here with Cockroach Labs. Um, I'm a bit of a noob when it comes to databases, but I'm learning too. And we are together in this journey. I'm actually a Python programmer for the past eight years or so. Um, and my favorite is to do gaming, little like snake games and guessing games and stuff like that. I'm actually an escape room addict a bit. So we won't talk about that unless someone asks the question. We, I wanted to audience, get, please ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get to these two questions from yesterday specifically um, before you started your demo, John. And then we already have two questions in the audience. Um, I wanted to shout out to you, uh, Samir and Ashutosh. Um, We will get to your questions in just a minute, but I want to address the two questions from yesterday. Are change feeds resumable? And will change feeds always catch up with database updates regardless of load? And then what is the impact of change feeds on server load? So it's a little out of context, I realize, but is it possible that either one of you can address that particular question? This was from Manesh yesterday towards the end of the day yeah i can quickly yes Mm -hmm. um change fee is resumable um you can when you start out the change fee default is start from now as a timestamp okay but you can specify a different time back in you know in the time um and uh and when you restart you can you know uh run uh, a different timestamp. However, uh, we do have a garbage collection time. So uh, any time back in the time, but before the back, uh, the garbage collection um, so yes. recycle. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Recycle that what records. Is, Once it's gone, the then you won't be able to. The, the default setting for the garbage collection is 24 hours, 48 hours. Tw- 25 hours. 25 hours, a little bit over a day. Okay. Um, And then the second uh, question we have is a little sassy. Um, Can you provide key differentiators between Cockroach DB serverless and Aurora serverless? I think we might not be the people to ask that. I think we need to get together in a room with Aurora serverless people, but um do either of you have that answer off the top of your head i think we didn't have to google a little bit i also think ours is so new (laughs) you could take a stab at it i can take a few a stab at a few aspects of that um and but Um, i i do want to caveat yes bloody from my (laughs) my baker knife um but uh i'm not you know i'm not i'm not an aurora serverless expert Right. So of course. I know some of the difference that I think an, an obvious difference um, 
if we don't look at you know the specifics uh on the technology is vendor lock-in, which mm. is actually, I think some a lot of, some people think, you know, hey, I, we're an AWS shop, we only work in AWS, you know, that's totally. not really a concern and that's mm -hmm. legitimate, but I think a lot of companies and a lot of developers wanna have that freedom to move. Um, so I think that's maybe a little bit of an undersold point, um, you know, Cockroach, serverless is designed to work with, you know, any cloud provider, um, any type of um, application deployment. So um, that would be, uh, could be significant for you. Yeah. Um, Are the feature, I mean, we don't really know the features of Aurora serverless. Um, yeah, so I know, um, I think uh, I've seen discussed uh, multi-region rights, um, which uh, is my understanding of Aurora serverless is that it's designed to work um, in uh, rights can only happen in a specific region, um, whereas mm -hmm. serverless is designed to be able to write across region and that um, I think as you know, as we continue rolling out kind of features in serverless and continue on that journey, you'll see us exposing more of that capability to the to the, the end users. Um, but cockroach DB you know, isn't, isn't new, it's been around for a while and our uh, serverless is built on the same architecture as CockroachDB, mm -hmm. which is very much designed for uh, multi-region, multi-region rights. Um, uh, uh, basically all, all nodes are, are essentially the same. So um, you can, uh, in their capabilities, so it's not, it's, uh, yeah, the architecture lends itself to being able to um, not just uh, have uh, right right throughput to a single location, but you know potentially globally. Um, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. The nice. other, I, I think, another aspect is really you know what we're what we're doing here also. You know, which is you'll see as a company, you know, Cockroach Labs is extremely open and responsive and evolving, mm -hmm. you know, really quickly. And so you have access to people like you know, the three of us, um, you know, there's venues, forums and Slack channels. And, you know, this is, this is our focus building, you know, the best database in the world. Um, so you, you can expect, you know, watching serverless being a part of serverless that, you know, it's, you're going to see really substantial growth. Um, I think that that's important too. And there's, there's technical details too. And maybe, I don't know if Jesse, you have anything to add on Aurora serverless, um, but we could also you know, maybe, maybe follow up in some way with more details. I think you covered uh, very well. You know, <laughs> it was, maybe it was we'll, pretty extensive. Yeah. Um, thank you for taking a stab at it, Bloody Baker. <laughs> um, hello to Adrian. <laughs> um, I want to talk to Samir really quick. Um, this is absolutely the right platform. Um, but we might not be the right respondents. Um, are there any benchmarks published with respect to comparison between Spanner and Yugabyte? Um, we are cockroach DB, so we're more we're closer to Spanner action. But I can Google that. Oh, Jesse and John are on this. Actually, they're throwing me. Um, uh, Jesse, let me have those links in our internal chat and I will make it happen. Yeah. Um, so Rain can share a blog about uh, uh, benchmarking between uh, Yugabytes and CockroachDB that we published. And we also published a few more benchmarks uh, on TPCC, which is pretty popular um, you know, uh, a data set and workload to run benchmark with. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then we've got our specific performance uh, metrics for CockroachDB. Can you all hear yeah. the twins in the background? Because I can. <laughs> You can't? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> I'm the only one. Cool. No pressure, mama. 
And here's the more recent performance metrics. Okay, cool. Um, so like I said, all questions are up for grabs. Absolutely 100%. Um, we just might have to Google a bit, or we might not exactly have the answer, but we will research for you. All right. Ashutosh is wondering about the context of migration. How quick and best possible way to migrate everything from SQL to CockroachDB? I'm going to assume you mean MySQL, maybe, within a SQL context. I think it's SQL uh, Server. Yeah, SQL. Oh, yeah, SQL Server yeah. to CockroachDB. I'm using a very simple logic in stored procedures. Ooh, I like this one. Who wants to tackle it? <laughs> I'll go for it. Um, so I think there's probably two questions here, or two parts to the yeah. question. So one yeah. might be, how do I? What's the best way to migrate data over? And then the other might be, how do I migrate? Um, how do I look at any maybe incompatibilities uh, and differences? So, um, so data-wise, uh, there. So our documentation uh, is is fairly thorough on on migration and what we support for migration. Uh, uh, the, the fastest way to migrate data is is through CSV, but we do support other formats. So um, CSV allows us to better parallelize the, the import of the data itself. Um, so if that's an option, if you have a large tables and a lot of data, mm -hmm. um, and you're looking at how you can do that in the shortest amount of time, CSVs may be the best option for you. In terms of any incompatibilities, um, for example, stored procedures, we don't currently support in Cockroach. And there will be some other incompatibilities between SQL Server and Cockroach DB. Um, I don't know if we have a good, I don't know, Jesse, if you know if there's a good summary of differences. Um, you know, I think one is to probably, I think there's a table somewhere that I don't know if I can find that of some of the features that we do and do not support. Um, but there will be a handful like storage procedures that you will typically need to convert. And we've worked with a lot of customers to do that. Um, I would say, you know, it might seem a little a little daunting at first, but typically it's not like it's not a, a you know a major lift. It's just a matter of going through and set, understanding kind of what you know each say start procedure or other incompatible feature is doing and seeing how to rewrite that um, either directly in Cockroach or maybe using um, some other kind of application side method. Yeah. I found. I found a blog post by cdata.com, export data from SQL Server to CockroachDB through SSIS. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can find a date on it, because always important. No date. There is no date. OK, so I'm handing this over with a lot of caveats, by the way, Ashutosh. Lots and lots of caveats. Yeah, I think generally. Um, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say really quickly. I think generally um, our documentation is really extensive. That's so that's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. Second would probably be any any blog posts like the ones I think that um, I think Jesse shared uh, through Rain that are uh, that we've created and posted. And then probably third are there's a lot out there that um, other people have posted as well. And mm -hmm. so those that third category, I would like 100 percent recommend that you review them. You're probably going to learn a lot. Um, just be like it's great to start with the official docs because that, you know, the right way to do it. it. You know, the person who did it, you know, may not have you know done it the right way, but I'm sure they have uh, things that you can glean from from the approach that they took. I'm also like my strongest concern is that they're talking about a really old version of Cockroach, for example, a really old version mm -hmm. of SQL Server where it doesn't work like that anymore. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, play, let us know. Please be sure to join us in the forum or the community Slack um, where we can help you. There's the community Slack. And there's the forum, and we got a shout out for our costumes. Thank you, Lisa. 
um, we aim to please. Um, I don't have any questions at the moment. Why don't we go to John's section of the um, module? Can we get a context for people that weren't here yesterday? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yesterday, uh, Jesse walked through creating a REST API using Node.js and Cockroach DB serverless. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was great. Um, so she created a database customers that were from Game of Thrones and so um, exposed, I don't know, like maybe four or five REST endpoints to interact with that, or maybe, mm -hmm. maybe something like that. So yeah. all the CRUD. Yeah, yeah. through Postman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Four, the four, the four standard CRUD um, mm -hmm. to be able to like uh, create new customers, um, kind of uh, retrieve them or list them, update them and delete them. Mm -hmm. um, and she did that, she did that locally. And so, um, and so that really showed, I think, how easy it is. She spun up a cluster and so cool. uh, Cockroach DB serverless. And yeah, it was, it's really fast. I mean, it's, it's kind of, you have to be like, wait, is something broken? Because it only took about five seconds. <laughs> it was so it fast. Done. It was so cool. Kind of, yeah. Um, and then let's see what else, Jesse. Um, we, we also showed you, you know, uh, once you get onto the, uh, the data cockroach serverless, you can see um, your spending quota, how, where you are at that quota. Um, and you can look at the queries uh, that was issued and um, find opportunities to tune those queries. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty powerful. Um, one thing that I know we've been getting a lot of um, kind of love for is this notion of spend limits and how simple mm. it is. So you can, um, and we're Cockroach DB serverless is free forever. So you can set a zero dollar spending limit yes. for your cluster to, to just start using it, which is, is pretty amazing. And then, um, you get a, a free amount of requests and storage. Um, it's like, do you, I know I gotta, I don't want to guess. I used, it used to be a 10 million transaction limit and a five gig. Um, I can look it up while you guys are. Yeah, the doing, thing I didn't understand is that you actually gain request units as you use it mm -hmm. at a certain rate. So even though you're allocated this this chunk, it actually increases um, over Ten. time per month what you get for free. You get 100 request units and five gig for free. I don't, I don't understand request units versus transactions. Can you, can either of you go into that? Yeah. So this is an area that I actually spent a little bit of time yesterday looking into it just so we could have an intelligent conversation on it. <laughs> um, cool. Cool, cool, cool. It's, it's a little, so it's a little, uh, maybe it's a little abstract, um, figuring out it's going to vary based on your workload. So, uh, so a request unit could be, or a query. So let's think about it in terms of how you're interacting with your cluster. If you send a simple select query, like what we were doing yesterday with a relatively small table, maybe you're querying on, uh, uh, yeah, either a small table or, or using like an optimized query with a good index. Uh, it's really a combination, I think, of uh, IO usage, or sorry, CPU usage and possibly uh, there's an IO component of it. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you're if you're hammering your server with super inefficient queries that are doing full table scans on huge tables, you're going to be it's going to incur a higher request unit cost uh, than if you're uh, doing smaller queries, more optimized queries. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's good, you know. So it's not it's not. Uh, I think that the there's not like a specific equation that we can relate. But I think the great thing is, is that you do get a lot for free. So you can experiment with what's this going to be in request units as I scale up traffic. Um, yeah. You can, you can kind of estimate that. So. Cool. And then, and then before we get it, we might not start the second half of this module at all if we keep getting questions, which I love, keep them coming. 
Um, do you think that we have to change too much to get our app working with Cockroach DB? And I can answer that a bit in that some applications just do not play well with Cockroach DB. For example, if your application is a WordPress website, for example, and you don't want to leave WordPress, you cannot use Cockroach DB. And the reason is that WordPress uh, develops so quickly and iterates so quickly that they don't want to switch off of their default um, database solution. And it's too bad because my blog, and the reason I know this is because my blog runs on WordPress. And I like one of the first things that I was going to do when I came here was <laughs> switch it over to Cockroach DB. Uh, so I did a lot of research on this. It won't work. But I have found that if my if I'm using an ORM um, that points then to a MySQL database hosted on GoDaddy, for example, hypothetically speaking, um, that I'm able to switch it over very easily, and I didn't have to change anything on my on my um, on my application or my laptop. That said, you know, the answer with all application development is it depends on how you, what you have set up now and, and what, what, if the only, if the only thing you want to change is Cockroach TV, I strongly recommend playing with the getting started guides. Um, if you are coding in Python, Go, Java, or JavaScript, we already have Hello World applications set up with how to connect them. Um, if you're playing with another language, please join us on our Slack or forum so that we can help you. And maybe it is too much, and we want to hear that feedback too. Like if you're using a language outside of those four, we want to know what it is because because we'll make it happen kind of thing. Do you all have something you want to add to that? <laughs> I think the other thing is, uh, you know, we are, um, CockroachDB is built for uh, OLAP, uh, o, uh, OLTP, not OLAP. So mm, it means it, it's great as running transactions, you know, um, shopping carts, um, in-game planes. Um, you can look up on our website and see what our customers are using us for you know we have a lot of great stories um, um put out there um and if you find some similarities that um then you have a better chance of uh, it's a better fit um yeah yeah definitely i know that the gaming mm -hmm. use case which is my jam is it's very it fits within cockroach db but we do have enterprise customers, massive financial companies, et cetera. Um, we're just going to yeah. keep getting questions, y'all. I don't I was mind. Say, that's totally fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> I was thinking about this uh, OLTP versus OLAP and, and yes. kind of what that means. And I think, you know, if you think about your application and what you're running, mm -hmm. if you expect, if you, there's a question yesterday that was, what happens, I think, if the REST request times out? Yes. Because it really takes that long. And I was like, yes. Ooh, that sounds like that's probably not an LTP workload. So that would be where you're doing a lot of like fast transactions, like, you know, a ton of concurrent fast transactions. Cockroach is like really optimized for that. If you're yeah. doing long running queries where you're doing analysis on data that might take, you know, a minute five minutes, 10 minutes, it's probably not the right database. Um, but having said that, and there's very specific databases for that type of use case, but having said that, you know, there's, there's so many use cases. I mean, I, I've been here three and a half months now. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy how many different use cases there are. I mean, yeah. there's a ton. And and one thing, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One thing we talk about, um, system of record use cases, mm -hmm. which are, um, which is Basically, you know, I need to know my data is going to be consistent and the same under all circumstances. Like if, you know, a data center goes down, I don't have to piece together, you know, data that's, you know, even like 10 seconds old or something like that. So, yeah. you know, what that's one huge.
huge advantage to Cockroach is this idea of this data consistency and, and survivability and yeah. customers love that developers love that. Mm -hmm. Um, and because of that, you know, uh, getting back to the original question, there are a few differences that you have to be aware of. And we like to talk about this, uh, isolation, isolation transaction level of serializability, mm -hmm. which is this data consistency guarantee. It means, and it, it does mean that if you're not currently have like a uh, uh, query retry logic in your application, which you should, <laughs> uh, you probably yeah. will need to add that. And we have good documentation on, on that as well. Um, that's one thing that we like to tell developers or like, cause I, I think a lot of times you don't really think about that issue of consistency and wrapping your head around, well, what happens if a transaction fails and can you retry yeah. it? And, um, cause you're just interacting with the database under most circumstances, everything's going to be fine, but there's going to be some cases where, you know, Hey, we couldn't, we couldn't, uh, execute that right query, um, have to, to retry it. Um, hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, we have a question that just came up. Adnan, um, is there any plan to support? Hi, <laughs> is there any plan to support, uh, the Prisma ORM on Node.js? And I have a story for you. Actually, Adrian totally also answered. Um, so Adrian and I were at KubeCon a week and a half ago, and we realized that Prisma had a booth there. So we totally walked over. Uh, to their booth to talk about this, this exact thing. Um, so yeah, we are working with Prisma right now. Um, we're working on the Prisma migrate feature. Uh, yeah, it's definitely in the pipeline. And he, I, I strongly recommend you join our community Slack, um, get in touch with Adrian. He is our JavaScript person, uh, but I was there. I talked to that owner, the founder. I was like, oh, hi. <laughs> um, but yeah, Prisma is awesome. hundred percent. So um, is it, I don't have no, the answer to this, but I was wondering, um, I was, well, well, uh, you guys were talking, I was looking at, you know, Prisma Future and question. I thought there was a Git, GitHub issue about support. And I think it said mm -hmm. something along the lines of it supports it in Postgres mode. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's true, like as a, at least a for now kind of workaround, but. Your puppy is moving. Oh, he's... Yeah, oh we gosh. got a we got a wave. Hey, puppers! Oh, hey, buddy! Oh, Sweepy, we got all kinds of gems on today's um, on today's show. Also, uh, girl twin would like to come in and see me. Um. So anyway, we're working on it. Let's let's get in touch yeah. and and basically to let you know how we decide which ORMs to start working on is based on community requests, on product pipeline, and on developer relations. So, I, for example, am moving forward the Python things because Python is my programming language of choice. Adrian's moving forward the JavaScript things that he knows about, um, but but. One of those factors is definitely community requests, and we would love to hear from you. Okay. I know it's wire po protocol compatible with Postgres. Does not flow all the way up the stack for ORM with Spring. It is pretty much a drop-in replacement. I'm not familiar with this. Are you too? At all? It might be something we play with. Yeah, more or less. I mean, I think the answer, and maybe you have a more specific answer, Jesse, but I think the answer is yes, in the sense that um, that it is, you know, an ORM that works, you know, with uh, Postgres typically will use a Postgres driver that is compatible with Cockroach. Um, mm -hmm. And we probably have some documentation and maybe we'll do a little quick search to find out where that is. Um, I already got gosh. it. We, ha we oh, yeah. totally have it. a demo. That's so cool. Awesome. I'm learning new things. Cool. Hey, thanks, Jordan. <laughs> 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 um, so the answer is yes. Um, we apparently, yeah. Uh, let me know how it goes with the new serverless offering. 
um, there is uh, there are instructions on there for how to use a local cluster as well. Adrian, thanks for answering, and thank you for the compliment. Always good to see you. Um, Adrian is working on a sample app for the Prisma ORM. Um, so Adelaide, thanks for the response. We have a Java app with MySQL and Big SQL queries using a lot of MySQL functions like add date, add time. Is it compatible with CockroachDB or do we have to change our queries? That's a great question. That's more towards the architecture perfectly for you two. Um, I think I go ahead, Jesse. You can take this one. <laughs> I don't think I have an answer. <laughs> okay. Um, I think first of all, you know, uh, again, coming back um, to the roots of uh, OLTP. If if your app is a you know OLTP transactional type of um, application, then yes, there is a, a better chance uh, or better compatibility. And secondly, for MySQL um, functions, so I just did a search on those functions. I don't see particular uh, implementation of add date or at time. Um, so you might need to do some uh, code changes using a different name of you know similar uh, functions um, but we I think we are NC compliant um, with you know there's always different flavors of uh, SQL and uh, some unique features um, or different function names that you might need to um, do some change but you know I would say if if your application is mostly NC SQL and um, compliant or an a OLTP type of transaction, I would give it a try. And if you have any other questions, um, uh, you can you can take a look. Actually, John just uh, got a uh, our document on date and time functions, so you can take a look. Um, I think we we'll likely have similar, you know. Uh, functions out there. Yeah, I was looking. Um, there's even a bit in our. Um, it looks like it looks like they're more keen on. Us. Reading and talking at the same time doesn't work, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, it looks like uh, in they're using their add date um, references within Golang um, that are being resolved as well. Um, and CockroachDB is written mostly in Golang. Uh, so that mm -hmm. might be why there's a hesitation. But definitely, if you're comfortable with it, I strongly recommend you put in an uh, issue on our GitHub um, requesting this feature. If it's a if it's a hard stop, you do not want to change your code. Um, you could always put in a feature request. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and there's there's a you know probably a couple different paths. Um, you know, one is uh, take a look at our date time functions and date arithmetic and that type of thing so that what we offer is also supported in MySQL and that something like an add date or add time is just, you know, uh, some sugar, you know, syntactic sugar uh, that you could use something different. Um, if you truly like are concerned about making your application compatible with both, which you right. know, some people do go that route. Um, and then if you're converting an application, you know, another route is, you know, Cockroach DB also has specific features that you can take advantage of that um, other databases don't necessarily support. Um, totally. So you, you may be able to add some 
uh, you know, conditional logic if you're trying to make your application compatible with both um, to where it's able to kind of detect what it's using. So I think we've seen a few different approaches to that, but mm -hmm. um, we, you know, there's, there's things that we don't support. Um, totally. And if it's if it's something that we we, we don't support, you can't find a, a solution. Obviously, this is the perfect place to ask, but also, you know, you can submit a feature request, like Rain said, which is great because we, um, as I was saying at the beginning of the podcast about us being really responsive and, you know, this is our, this is what we do. And we are working really, really hard every day to make the product better that we like to hear from you. Absolutely. Um, awesome question from Junaid. I hope that's right. Does CarGarageDB roll back a transaction if a client making the transaction fails ungracefully without closing the connection? I love this. Very specific question, but that does happen, you know, quite a bit. That can happen quite a bit. What do you think, Jesse? Or John? I had to read this a couple times. So I think what it is, Jesse, is so the client starts a transaction and then goes away or something. And what happens? Totally. Like let's say, let's say a client was making a transaction um, with the database and all of a sudden their networking failed or um, or their laptop crashed, um, the platform crashed, something like that. It would be it would be not an ideal situation, but would Cockroach TV I, I think it would depend on whether or not it actually made it to the database, right? So like yeah, maybe this is a good time to talk about like acid compliant transactions. Right, exactly. And, <laughs> which you kind of touched on yesterday, Jesse, and how we how we support it, but there wasn't really time given what we were trying to cover to really go into detail. Like what does that mean and why is that important? And I think this question, I don't know if you want to kind of just explain that. Kind of what um, that means and what it means for a situation where something's not committed. Yeah, when when the transaction is not committed, um, you know, it's it's essentially. I think we have some uh, query timeouts or transaction timeouts. Then the then the you know the, the transaction should not succeed, and it will not be you know consistent uh, right to other readers. So the transaction should fail and um, it should be rolled back. John, you have anything to add? Yeah, I mean, I think that's 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 exactly it. You know, really it's the, the commit that persists it. And I wish I knew in detail, like exactly what um, mechanism cleans that up. But because of the, you know, the acid compliant compliancy in our transactions, if it's not committed, it's not um, seen by any other query that's going on um, anywhere else in the system. It's, you know, it's not um, it's not permanently persisted any, you know, anywhere. So it will be rolled back uh, or, or cleaned up, I guess, maybe um, eventually. Um, so yeah, I think that. I think that's a good. I think that's a good answer. Um, yeah, there's probably some so. details on kind of how that works. I think um, in our documentation, I you know one great area to look at. There's actually um, an architecture section that talks about the layers of the database and kind of goes into some of the details. And there's each part of that documentation has like an overview, which is like a short thing that you can read that kind of gives you everything you need to know. And then underneath that, there's kind of a deeper dive into some of the mechanisms. Um, yeah, I found the rollback transaction section of our documentation, but I wasn't, I don't see the part, like it, it says how to do a rollback, like a general rollback, as opposed to an automatic self-healing rollback, um, yeah, I which I think is what the question mm -hmm. is more focused on, is this kind of um, automatic if the transaction fails without closing the connection. It's a, it's 
great question. Yeah, I think what you're referring to, Rain, is like the actual rollback kind mm -hmm. of SQL command. Yeah, the, the can, function. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, you can yeah. issue, yeah, in your SQL if you want to explicitly roll back. But yeah. if a transaction is never committed, then it's just yeah. handled automatically by the database. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then back to our date. Uh, thank you, Deft Dog. Got that one. Um, could the add date function be emulated with a stored proc? And is that supported? Um, I looked up the document. I don't think we support uh, add date right now. And uh, the and as John said, we don't support stored procedure uh, either. So it may be something that, um, but I know, you know, the at sort of the interval, basically that's a daytime interval, you know, uh, calculation. I think we do support interval data types, but it may be mm -hmm. a good feature request to raise. Um, yeah. What's your Actually, this is a, a feature request that came through in 2017. Let me just put it in here. It's feature, it's an issue number 17511. Um, get on there and let us know it's important to you. Um, one of the ways that uh, feature requests are prioritized is if several people have commented on an issue um, with their use cases. Um, you don't have to be specific about your use case at all. Um, but I strongly recommend uh, Deft Dog and who was the OG? Uh, Adela. Uh, go on there and comment and, uh, and let's make that happen for you. Um, so that's the issue where it was requested. <laughs> um, and then uh, let me get back on track. Adela, thank you. Um, awesome. Thank you. Let us know how we can help community Slack and forum. If the client goes away, does it have a different timeout if it's just stuck? Uh, there are two different kinds of timeouts. One is query timeout and then the other one is uh, a, a connection. Uh, we usually recommend you set up a uh, connection lifetime. Um, I hope that addressed the question. <laughs> That's good. Thank you, Dev Dog. Um, and then is there a different timeout for client connection lost versus long running transaction timeouts? I would assume so. But I don't know for sure. Do either of you know that one? Um, so, so I guess there's connection lost. So there's there's typically so there's I guess connections on the database and connections on the client. Um, so if you are looking at um, timeouts, you want to look at both because most clients or drivers will have a connection timeout, and you could be hitting that timeout and not the cockroach timeout. Um, so cockroach does have um, settings, I know, for query timeout um, and connection timeout, but I think would be entirely on the client. I don't know that there's a database connection timeout because that that's basically the client's trying to connect and database isn't responding. Right. So it's just going to give up at some point. Um, and I can look up the, I'm terrible at, at reading and talk, talking to, so I can try the the uh, query timeout. Exactly. Out, the exactly. Yeah. So I did a I did a cockroach DB connection lost versus timeout, and um, it looks like uh, there are definitely client connection parameters you can set. Um, and then we have troubleshooting docs where it's talking about connection issues and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I'll see. There's a statement timeout, um, which I, I, yeah, that's what I thought. It defaults to no timeout. 
I think. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. Um, so it'll just keep going forever. <laughs> You'll be like, all right, I'll keep trying. Yeah. And I, I'm not hundred percent sure how those settings might differ on serverless. Um, yeah, exactly. So, we need to test things. Yeah. So I'm going to make the assumption that they're the same based on what we're seeing in the documentation mm -hmm. for cluster settings and they, mm -hmm. and that those are available, but, um, yeah, I think because serverless came out just last week, um, yeah, there's probably a, a few spots that we're not we're not 100 percent sure on. We'll probably want to look look into. Yeah, definitely. Um, Thank you, Def Dog. Yeah, that's that's a good one though. There, I think there's also some uh, idle timeouts for uh, uh, idle connections as well. I think all of those are set to to zero by default, which means don't timeout. Yeah. Um, uh, which is the same default unless you have like a specific reason why you want to kill those. Right. Kills, kills right. not a nice word, but terminate. Kill. Terminate. terminate. I mean, you can say yeah. kill today. Look at your costume. Maybe today's um, an yeah. Like this is a violent show <laughs> today. I mean, I mean, kind of like Jesse and I are chill. We 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 obviously did not coordinate the three of us with our costumes. I'm an animal. Well, Jesse's a this, farmer. This costume was was just a baker costume for years, and then my son, as he got older, was, was not like, it's not cool enough. Exactly. Yeah. He's like, you got to yeah. do something more with this costume. I was like, okay, we'll put some blood on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, so someday sense. I'm gonna have to put blood on my penguin. Um, Ooh. No comment on that one. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. Not not happening. Oh. The Linux is never going away. Um, I have had a skeleton costume uh, where I also, so it was similar to this in that it had the eyes on the hood. And so I was wearing it like this with a little skeleton smile on my, oh, wow. painted onto my face. And then, and I was on a, I was on a panel on Halloween. This was last year, virtual. And, uh, and I had specifically put on the face makeup for the eyes underneath. And at one point I was like, look, this is too hot. And I just switched and it was perfect. And I didn't do it on purpose, but it looked cool. Um, normally I'm much more into Halloween, but this year we just moved from the Netherlands to here and all my stuff is in a boat somewhere in between. Oh, shoot that country and this one so i just ordered mm -hmm. this very quickly in order to take the kids trick-or-treating this weekend cool. but yeah so i'm sorry you did not get to finish we have not finished this module we're gonna have to schedule it for the future definitely i give, a, give a 30 second plug for it right i know right we're gonna have yeah. to um, we have the next few weeks scheduled out, but we're just going to yeah. have to have another yeah. Node.js uh, REST API second half kind of thing and it's go for it. It's kind of cool because it gives me some time to maybe develop some more <laughs> content around it. And I'm kind of excited because I was going to do deployment to Google Cloud Run, which we um, just established a partnership with or were recognized yeah. as a partner. And it's like serverless application with serverless database, which I think is amazing. That's and, tight. you know, normally when you do serverless applications, like you got to connect to some non-serverless database and that's outside totally. of that serverless ecosystem. So um, I'm super excited about that. And then I think after session after next, I'm also doing a migration. It's nice. called, called import backup and restore, but I want to kind of make it more of a migration because I think that's one of those like things like how do we get our stuff over to serverless? Well, I'll, I'll walk you through migrating from a few different platforms. Oh, I love that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, we just got a quick question, maybe a quick question, maybe not a quick question. Manish uh, was asking about, um, is it possible to write a Kafka source connector for CockroachDB to stream changes from CockroachDB to Kafka, which is awesome. I don't know. Are you all familiar with Kafka? Yeah, you don't have to write a um, source connector. We have a, a feature out of box called change feed. 
and uh, you can just point that to Kafka as a sink. Um, yeah, that's all. Oh, I love it. I love quick answers. Yeah, you don't have to write. Thing we already we got you. Thank you, Manish. Um, yeah, so <laughs> today started with a bit of chaos. Um, I have not heard from the twins at all, actually, in my office, but um, I can hear them playing with marbles right outside my office. So hopefully, you couldn't hear them. Um, we are done for today. I don't have the schedule in front of me for next week. I know, right? Love, love answers that are like, we already do that. We got you. We got you, fam. Um, thank you, Deaf Dog and Manish and Adrian. Thank you back at you. Uh, Lisa, who else we got? We got a lot of people today. Adela, and Junaid and Jordan Adnan. My goodness, we were uh, we were busy today. 100% Samir Ashutosh. Um, we were definitely planning on finishing a module from yesterday and 100% just had straight up office hours. I love office hours that just keep going with the questions. Um, we definitely need to get going today a little bit early, uh, but thanks to Jesse and John, my guests for today, we will be here next week on Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday next week will be another module, which I don't, which, is next week import Jason. export? Working with uh, Jason oh, data. Nice. Yeah, that'll nice. be a good one. Yeah. Nice. I'll be awesome. there for, yeah. Awesome. We're going to see the butcher of Baker Street again. Uh, we will see the farmer again in the future, I'm sure. You will definitely see the penguin in the future. And um, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.